All right, another letter here to read. This one is from V. Harun Tunian. I'm probably messing that up. It's an Armenian name, it says there. Um, I don't know what happened to the envelope for this one, but um, yeah. Uh, let me read the letter here. Dear Brother Brian, I've been a viewer of a few years now, having first uh, seeing a clip of you on the Stranger Than Fiction channel. Uh, after the first couple of years watching the two channels, I found myself getting more and more into the Word of God. Not until July of 2021, realizing finally I was only a professing Christian. Uh, I went through the same thing years ago. I owe a lot to your ministry, seeing as it has led me to the Lord for me, at least, thanks to your exposing of the evil and corruption in the world that was um, made ever more clearly and specifically against Christ. The world is very much against Christ, yes. Everything you've shared, showed me ultimately led to my revelation and rebirth, so I can't thank you enough. Since being born again, I've learned more about the scriptures than all the rest of my life. 21 years old, as a professing Christian, and I've only been born again for about a year and a half. Uh, you've showed me how to use this sword so well. I've since gotten uh, through to one of my half-sisters who grew up a devout Catholic carrying a crucifix around to a new now-born-again sister who will preach to those around her to leave Satan's church. That's great. I'll get back to that here in a minute, but just to show you, there's nothing personal on this. But just I just want to put that up there and show... That's not my writing. This is a real letter, just to show I'm not faking any of this stuff. I don't, I can't show certain letters because there's personal information in them and whatever, but we really do get these real letters, just in case, because I know there's all the conspiracy stuff on YouTube, and I think it's actually just fake or whatever. He works for, you know, you know they're real letters from real people. Back to the letter. I'm not so sure of the rest of my family, but such is the effect of truth. A house divided. Anyway, it has um, been laid on my heart that I should show my gratitude and bless your ministry as your ministry has blessed me. So when I was watching one of your videos where you were at your desk, I noticed the sound quality wasn't the best. It could be having some static and background noise. So I had the idea of donating to a new microphone for your desk videos as well as um, talks about money. I hope you'll be able to make good use of this donation. I also would have hoped you could answer a few questions about um, seemingly basic subjects I will run into arguments about. Um, quite often, that uh, always stump me. Um, okay, so as far as the, the whole thing of uh, some of the videos I do at my desk, I have a little, um, can't think of the brand of that camera right there, it's just a little web camera that I put on top of my, one of my monitors and then I can do Camtasia videos. I should update the whole thing. It's my Camtasia, you know, software is really old and the webcam should probably be updated as well. Uh, it doesn't have the best microphone, but you know, I just do the videos quickly as a way to get the truth out there. And, but I'm sorry, I've seen a number of people, you know, say, Hey, I can't really hear the video too well. Um, I should probably, I'm, I'm working on that. That's one I'm, thinking about here. But question number one um, uh, would be about what exactly did Jesus mean when he said the kingdom of God is within you because I'll get Gnostics that point uh, at that verse all the time. Um, well, what it's talking about there in Luke 17 verse 20 through 21, um, there's two different kingdoms. Kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, but the kingdom of heaven can also be called the kingdom of God. So that's can be confusing to people, but the kingdom of God is never a reference to the physical kingdom that's coming. Or no, I'm sorry, the uh, kingdom, kingdom of heaven is never a reference to the uh, spiritual kingdom. Whereas the kingdom of, uh, kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven can be a ref or can both refer to the physical coming kingdom. Um, but the kingdom of heaven never refers to what you have within you. Um, okay, Romans chapter 14, verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's how the kingdom of God is within you. It's the Holy Ghost there, and it's <clears throat> righteousness, peace, and joy. So you can have the kingdom of God within you. 
It is not a reference to anything physical, kingdom of God, or heaven is in your heart, or something like this. Um, so there's your answer to that. Um, number two, another one that stumps me, and maybe you've heard people touch or teach this sort of doctrine, is that uh, Christians don't go to heaven directly when they die, but first to some sort of paradise limbo until the great white throne judgment. So I guess what exactly does the Bible say happens when you die? Well, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I have a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. There's scripture after scripture. You know, I mean, what's happening is there are people that are just complete servants of the devil, and they're coming out with some of the dumbest things. I see this all the time. Oh, the Bible used to say that the lion would lay down with the lamb. No, it didn't. It always said wolf with the lamb. Okay. Uh, well, the Mandela effect, they changed it magically. Okay, the Mandela effect was uh, devised by a witch. And what they do is they go and they go after gullible Christians. And another one is the thing of the Bible never says that Christians go to heaven. You know, you don't go up to heaven. Well, that's kind of funny because John was caught up in the book of Revelation. <laughs> You know, uh, well, yes, but that was a unique situation. But how the 24 elders get there? How did the angels round about the throne get there? In my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there, me, ye may be also. Well, that's talking about the millennial kingdom or something. And they get into all this stuff and you just, okay, shut up. Just go away. Whatever. There's multiple scriptures that talk about us going to be with the Lord. The Lord's in heaven. Right. So, uh, yeah. And the great white throne judgment is for the lost, dead. Okay, Revelation chapter 20. It's for lost people, not for Christians. You are not judged at the great white throne judgment. Our judgment is the judgment seat of Christ. And how do you get there if you don't go to heaven to be with the Lord? We're judged, you know, uh, we'll bow before Jesus Christ. You know, we'll all stand before the Lord. Well, how are we going to do that if we don't go to heaven? You know, if you die right now before the catching up, your body is all that's in the ground. Okay, the soul and the spirit are gone. They're with the Lord. That's what's absent from the body, present with the Lord. Paul, when he's killed in the book of Acts, he says, he goes up, they carry his dead body out of the city, and he, his life comes back to him, and he goes back into the city and preaches again. But Paul, writing later, later he says, I was caught up to the third heaven and saw things which are not lawful for me to utter. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to be coming out with a video in the future just debunking all this, these things, these satanic little attacks that come out try to wreck your faith in the Word of God. And that's going to be one of them. Yes, Christians do go to heaven when they die. All right. When the catching up happens, then your body becomes incorruptible. Dead in Christ go up first. You know, they're in terms of their body. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. You know, we don't just stay there in the clouds. We go with him to heaven. Um, <clears throat> number three, question number three. And finally, what is it, what is to be said about true Christians being elect? I'll get these people saying, I'm not a Calvinist, but then say, we don't choose God, he chooses us. And I know that's true to a degree, but they'll also say, we don't take part in our salvation. However, you would answer these um, would mean a lot. Video, mail, email, sincerely. Um, I'm sorry, I, I said V. Harrington. It's, I missed the first name there. It's S would be the first initial. V would be the, the middle. And then Harrington. Harrington, however you say it. I apologize, I can't say your name correctly. But as far as the election thing is concerned, um, where Calvinists, where John Calvin philosophized his way into trouble, was he saying, well, obviously, if God is omnipotent, God is omnipresent, omniscient, he knows everything, he's everywhere, he's whatever. Well, he would certainly know who gets saved. Well, that you could make that argument. But then the problem with Calvinism is that there are people that are elected to salvation and there are people that are elected essentially to damnation. And there's nothing that they can do about it. Well, that contradicts multiple scriptures. We are saved. God knows who gets saved, certainly. But he gives everybody a free chance. You have free will to make up your mind one way or the other. Well, then so you get to save yourself. No, it's not. You're responding to the Holy Spirit prompting you and saying, convicting you of your sins. 
How about it? Do you want to get saved? Will you believe the Bible, what it says about your sin and about salvation? Well, yes, I do. Okay. Then you meet God's criteria in terms of come to him as a sinner, believe by faith, you know, I want to have a new life and whatever else. And Jesus died. He shed his blood on the cross. He was buried. He rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. You know, you go through the whole thing of the gospel. Pray to God. Ask God to save you. God looks and says, okay, yeah, they're real. They're serious about this. And then he saves you. Okay. It's an act of your own free will. That's what faith means. If you're forced into election, then you don't need faith. Okay. It just comes all of a sudden, it just, you know, you're walking along, doo -doo 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 -doo, and all of a sudden, you know, salvation, you know, bang, and hits you on the head. I'm saved now. You know, wow. That's what it would be if you were truly elected. Or you would just kind of live without sinning or something. So, hopefully that answers your questions. Thank you for the letter. And um, we'll see you in the next video.